Welcome to Just Say This, the place to get all the help you need for the birds and bees talks. I'm your host, Amy Lang. Just a quick reminder, this show is for grown-ups because I'll be swearing. There'll be lots of swears, and then I'll also be talking about grown-up sex. I can guarantee that your kids do not want to listen to this, and they really don't want to listen to it with you. You've been warned. Do you have a question for me? Please give me a call. The phone number is 206-926-1522, 206-926-1522, and I will answer on the show. And if you have a funny sex talk story, please call in those as well, 206-926-1522. Thanks. Hey, how's it going? I hope you're holding up in these trying, awful times. I don't want to jump down that rabbit hole, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go down another hole. Ha, just kidding. Here's my thought of the day. I just taught a class about uh, how to talk with tween boys about sex. It's a three-part series. If you get my newsletter, you heard about it. And then I did a little quickie hump day session with my Solution Center members. And in both conversations, the topic of 69 came up. Now, you know, episode 69 and episode 169 explain how to talk to kids about 69. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. What I'm going to talk about is what do you do with their playground chatter, their bringing stuff home, the swears, all the potty talk and all of that? And how do you handle it when your nine-year-old wants to know what 69 is and, you know, might even have, a, you know, kind of know what it is, know it's about oral sex. And then perhaps you haven't talked about oral sex. So that's what I want to just give you a little help with. So first of all, you remember, do you remember all the stuff that went on on the playground and with your friends and you're trying to figure out like what is 69 slang for sex, you know, BJs, the whole shebang, talking about boobs and down low areas on people with penises and all the slang and stuff. And then all the mystery about just sex in general, um, trying to figure out what all these different terms mean. So that still happens today. Of course, thanks to porn, it's happening sooner and it's more, um, we'll just say explicit. Anyway, so this info is coming to your kids. Your kids are going to repeat stuff. They're going to hear stuff and that's completely normal. So it's important for you to get ahead of it, partially because they need to know how to handle it. And also because you need to establish yourself as the person to go to if they don't know what 69 means or what a BJ is or what oral sex is. And so what you can say to them is, you know, something along the lines of, you know, I remember when I was a kid, there was all this stuff that went on on the playground and things I didn't understand and words I didn't get. And, you know, kids were talking about stuff. And I just want to let you know that I remember that and how much I would have loved to have someone I could talk to and ask questions about the kind of stuff that I was hearing. Then you say, I'm, I want to be that person for you. So if you have questions about what you hear on the playground, please don't hesitate to ask me because I'll help you. It's kind of a crazy world out there. And, you know, the smarter you are about this and the more information you have, the better you're going to feel when something weird comes up with somebody else. So there you go. The next thing that I would also recommend you say is, and in other news, if you are talking about this stuff, you should be really careful because if an adult is around and can hear you, they can freak out because most adults are not like me. And because if I overheard something, yeah, I might be a little bit upset and worried, but I wouldn't freak out. I would just make sure that you all knew what you were talking about and that it wasn't okay to be talking about that in that circumstance and point, you know, point you to resources or whatever, like your parents or something like that. But not everybody's like me. So the rule is, if you're going to talk like that, if you're going to swear, if you're going to talk about that stuff, do it away from other adults. And then be really careful about who you're having those conversations with. If it's kids you're a really good friend with, that's one thing. If it's some rando kids, that's another thing. So you kind of have to pick your audience. Anyway, um, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Because 69, 69, 69. I don't think I've said the word number 69 as many times as I did yesterday. Alrighty. On with the show. We've got some good news for you from the mail bag. Hey, Amy, my 17 year old son told me last night that he's concerned about low testosterone. Why? Because he feels his sex drive is too low for a teenage boy. 
I'm taking this quite seriously because his dad's very low sex drive has been extremely hard on our marriage, and I do not want this for our kid. I know I need to schedule an appointment with an MD, but what else should I do? Thank you. Oh, this boy. I just feel for him. Our world tells boys and men, testes havers, that they should be virile beyond compare, that they should always be ready to go, that everything should turn them on, that they should be greased up and ready to hump at any moment. So this is messaging is really hard because of course that's not true. Everybody's different. And the hard thing about being a teenager is of course you're comparing yourself to what seems like it's is normal. Like he thinks he's not like a normal kid. And it's so hard. It's so, so hard to be in that space. As I know you recall, see my previous rant, I think. I feel like this is all related. Anyway, um, so with this kiddo, uh, yeah, the concern is probably real because of his father's situation. But the other thing is if he is consuming media and that is really reinforcing this idea that you need to be boned up and ready to roll at any moment and that it is there's a direct relationship between your feeling horny and wanting to do it constantly and your... Um, like your personhood, uh, that's a big, that's a big problem. Um, so a couple of thoughts. My first one, of course, is porn. And I think that, of course, he's seen porn and it could be that he sees porn and how those people are behaving and he thinks, oh, I don't feel like that. He might not be turned on by porn, so he might think there's something wrong with him. Um, and so he is maybe comparing himself to that. And so that's got him worried. He may be hearing about his friend's exploits and that's not happening to him. And so he may be worried. And then the last thing, of course, is yeah, he might have low T. That's a thing. It happens to lots and lots of people. There's nothing unusual about it per se. And it's really hard, right? When <laughs> they're not hard, just kidding. Um, it's hard when you're comparing yourself and you think there's something wrong with you and it has something to do with sex, right? With sex. And again, especially for men and boys, like it's such a big deal about being sexual and I can just see how painful it is for him. So yes, go to the doctor. Absolutely. Get that tested. And one thing about doctor's appointments is that he should absolutely have that appointment alone. He should be alone with his doctor talking about that. I, um, you know, you can back channel and make the appointment. And so you can say, will you please talk about these things? But um, they need to have, he needs to have his own conversation with his own doctor about this and have you out of the room because it's really hard to talk about this in front of your mom, I would imagine. And uh, the other piece of this is that at least in Washington, um, when you're 14, when kids are 14, uh, HIPAA pops up and you can't have access to their medical records or information. Um, so this will be a private conversation between um, him and his doctor, he and his doctor, and that will get him started down a path of sorting out what's going on. Then the other thing is that everybody's different everybody's different. Some people don't have any libido at all. Some people have crazy libido. Libido changes throughout the lifespan. And so it could just be that he's one of those people that isn't, you know, just isn't so horny. So anyway, I hope all that helps. And, you know, bottom line is like paying attention to that whole thing around, am I normal? Am I normal? Am I normal? Really, really, really the biggest thing that's going on in adolescence on so many levels. So there you go. Uh, in the show notes, there's a really excellent uh, article from Scarlet Teen about libido and this very thing. So go check that out. Okay, here's the next one. I showed my nine, almost 10-year-old son a couple of the Everybody Curious videos and told him he could watch them on his own to learn more about these topics. I said that these are important topics he's going to have to learn about anyways, and this is a way he wouldn't have to talk to me about it as much. He got upset and said that he already knows about all this stuff and why am I making him learn it again, etc., etc. I explained that he doesn't know everything and there is so much more to learn and, and it's my job to make sure he knows everything he needs to before he gets older. He kept crying and then he slammed out of the room and went to his bedroom and slammed the door. Frowny, smiley face. Frowny face, not a smiley face. I'm feeling really frustrated because I've tried to be open with him about all these topics while not pushing things too much. I try to bring things up as they come up, for example, from TV shows. 
Maybe he can sense my nervousness around talking to him about sex. I think I'm doing a pretty good job of appearing calm and nonchalant, but maybe not. Do you have any suggestions on what I could do next? I feel like he's still somehow gotten the message from our culture that he should be embarrassed to talk about sex. Okay. Um, yeah, this is rough, right? And oh, poor guy. Poor, poor guy. So a couple things. Um, when kids get to be this age, uh, tennis, they have this natural thing that happens. It's sort of I'm going to call it an instinct that makes them think and and react to talking about sex like it is the grossest thing in the history of mankind. Talked about this before. Um, And everybody's different. Some kids, they're fine. Some kids, they're not. Some kids, they're in the middle. And so I just want to normalize that. I also want you to know that um, it does sound like you've done a pretty good job of talking with him. And maybe you have done a really good job and he's just full up of this stuff. One of the questions um, that comes to mind for me is around how frequently are you really pushing this? Are you being a sex talk pusher and you're just giving him too much information too quickly? Um, And at nine, um, you still got a lot of time to go. You got a lot of ways, got a lot of time to get a lot of information to him. So I'm wondering if you're kind of just overdoing it in general. So it might be time to back up the truck. Um, love that you're using things and na- things that occur in nature, like TV shows and that sort of thing. Um, I think he, I mean, maybe he senses your nervousness, but maybe not. And, you know, who cares? Uh, you've been doing it long enough. I'm guessing that it's just like kind of how you are when you talk about this stuff. And, you know, nobody's perfect at this. So I wouldn't worry about that. Is he getting messages that sex is yucky and gross and he shouldn't be talking or thinking about it and be embarrassed? Oh, sure. Oh, sure he is. That's what his peers are for. That's what our culture is all about. And that's unavoidable. That's totally unavoidable. It's a bummer, but it's there. But again, you've been talking to him and encouraging these conversations. So that's in there too. Finally, where do you think I'm going to go? With this great big reaction, the crying, the door slamming, he could have been exposed to porn. And the reason I'm saying that is because of this huge reaction. So if he already knows about healthy sexuality, which it sounds like he does, and he doesn't really know what it actually factually looks like, and then he sees porn and he sees people having sex, do you see me air quoting? Um, then uh, he could have put that in his head that this is what sex is, this is what it looks like, and that's what he is that's what's happening so when you say watch these videos or look at you know we're going to have this conversation or just casually stop about talk about stuff that's what's in his head and i wouldn't want to talk about it either so i think you need to ask him about that um and see what he says because you need to get that cleared up you need to know anyway right um because that might be part of it uh the other thing too is that it could be that and this is hard Uh, that somebody has taken advantage of him in some way and is doing sexual things with him. And so when you're pushing on it, uh, having the conversations, giving him the information that's triggering him, and because he knows sex isn't for kids, but this person might be doing sexual stuff with him and telling it to keep it secret. So that's another conversation. I would start with the porn. Um, and then I would also apologize to him and just say, Hey, you know what? I get that you're getting older and this stuff can feel pretty funky. So I'm going to slow my roll on our conversations and not going to, not going to not talk about it. Um, there are lots of places for you to learn, but we're still going to have conversations, but let's take a break for now and let him recover a little bit. So anyway, turns out this, uh, turns out this show, this episode was all about porn. I feel like all I do is talk about porn, but you already knew that. Um, little bits of porn here and there. I'll just call it, I shouldn't call it, I should call my show Just Say This About Porn. All right. Okay. That's it from me. Um, as always, would love, love, love to hear your questions. Anything goes. If you think it's a dumb question, ask it anyway, because you're going to help somebody else. All righty. Hang in there in these rough and tough days. I hope, um, hope you're okay. That's it for this week. Thanks to everyone who's been calling in. The number is 206-926-1522. So please leave me a message if you have a question or a tale from the trenches. And thank you to Melanie Smith, my producer, and to Rolf, who wrote the Birds and Bees and Kids theme song. 